Good evening. We will call the Joint Economic Development Organization Committee, uh, board rather, board of directors to order. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to make just a couple of announcements in background. The meeting this evening was originally established at the request of Jay Garner, the consultant for our uh, consulting project. The meeting was set at Heritage Hall at the Expo. Then a request was received from GoToPeka for a board meeting this week to take action on a, a commitment involving an incentive agreement. So it made no sense to have two separate meetings, so we're combining them to one meeting. Uh, the official board meeting must be televised, and that is not possible in Heritage Hall to be live. So the meeting was relocated here, so that it could be uh, on television. And that's a quick summary about where we are and why we're here. I want to thank the Topeka Police Department for making the room available and assisting us in the arrangements. And following uh, the official board meeting, the Jay Garner meeting will follow that he will be directing us on. And one additional note, uh, as the um, uh, board members have learned, we have had requests for a, and another JADO meeting to take action on some contracts. And that will, has been posted for next Wednesday night, July 1. So I appreciate the JADO board members being agreeable to all of these meetings here in a couple of weeks uh, when, when we are busy getting into the summertime. Uh, and with that, uh, then we will proceed with the roll call. Mayor Wolgas? Here. Here. Council Member Isla? Here. <laughs> Council Member Cohen? Here. Commissioner Bueller? Here. Cook? Present. And Archer? Here. Thank you. And we have um, all voting members of the um, county and the city present. So you have the agenda before you. Uh, we are not having the uh, minutes of the previous meeting on the agenda tonight so that we can move more rapidly through this meeting and get on to the next one. The second item is a discussion and possible action on Go Topeka on Project Cedar, and I ask uh, Scott Smathers to come up and um, address the, uh, the board and provide the background. Mayor, Mr. Chair, board members, I appreciate you all taking uh, the Scott, time. you'll have to go I over there. Yeah, to, uh, I can't see you. Those, <laughs> we, we have our rules here. All right, I apologize, <laughs> yes. Uh, I appreciate you all taking the time, and uh, I'll try to go through this pretty quick. I just passed an out piece of my team notes for the uh, discussion tonight, and I'm just going to give these to you so you can follow along as, as I kind of talk about it. Basically, we're, we're excited to uh, talk about this project. As many of you know, uh, the Federal Home Loan Bank of Topeka has been looking uh, at, at, at their opportunities in, their, in the uh, four-state area that they cover. And we are excited to be able to uh, be in serious discussions with them regarding the possibility of them actually continuing to locate here. They would be looking at moving out of their facility that they currently lease and would be building a brand new facility. The facility would be about 80,000 square feet. They're estimating, excuse me, they're estimating the uh, cost of the facility to be to around $20 million. They'd have another $3.5 million worth of equipment on top of that. The big thing that we're happy about is it keeps the 220 plus employees here in our market. These employees make on average over $80,000 a year and the impact of keeping them in our market is critical in our perspective. So what we are proposing to do is a, a multiple prong effect uh, what we're looking at doing is giving them money for jobs. Uh, the way we handle the money for jobs, they are talking about potentially having 17 new jobs over the next five years. What we would do is for jobs paying 40 to $60,000 a year, we would give them $4,000 a job. For jobs paying over $60,000 a year, we would give them $6,000 a job. These jobs would be paid out over a five-year period. And so, uh, ultimate, and they would have five years uh, to get the job. So if they hired three new people the first year at $60,000, we would pay them $1,200 a year for a five-year period for those jobs is how that would work. In addition, we would be giving them money for uh, their investment. The money that we would do, we, we would give them $8,000 per million of investment in the building and $2,000 per million in investment for the equipment. 
The reason why you see a difference there is the building is here for many, many years and ultimately goes on the tax rolls. And it is Class A office space, which is a type of, of uh, facility that we are in short supply of here in our market. So uh, we would be looking at that. That would come up with approximately $167,000 worth of money for the investment on that. And then we would provide them $200,000 for training over a five-year period, training and cert certifications for their employees. That would involve all the employees, not just the new ones, but the existing ones as well. As you know, uh, a skilled workforce is critical to our market, and so improving the workforce in our market is a benefit, we believe, to our market overall. And lastly, we would partner with the city uh, in relation to the infrastructure costs that would be involved. There's approximately $1.56 million worth of infrastructure that has to be done for water and road work, and we would we would recommend that we contribute 780,000, up to 780,000 of that to partner with the city. Uh, we've been very fortunate in that the city has been uh, willing to work with us on this and we greatly appreciate uh, their willingness to do this. Uh, other things I was, I was asked to mention, there will be, uh, they will be looking for IRBs from the county. I believe that submission has already been made. Obviously they still have the uh, state programs that they're also looking at. So that kind of gives you an idea, and what I'm asking from you all is a commitment from us to fund this effort. Okay, uh, and we don't have a contract here tonight. That's, That's because we are, we're making the commitment, and then they need to put some things together yet to finalize That's um, correct. what different things that will be a part of that. Yes, sir. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, there are questions. Mr. Mr. Mayor? Uh, Scott, do you know if the, the Federal Home Loan Bank is planning on using local engineers, local architects, local contractors? You know, I, I think probably the best thing for me to do right now is have Pat Doran come up, if that's all right, and let okay. him kind of talk about it, so. All right, thank you. Mr. Duran. Good if evening. If you would state your title, your position, helpful, thank you. I'm Pat Doran, Senior Vice President and General Counsel of the Federal Home Loan Bank of Topeka. It's my pleasure to be here this evening. As Scott mentioned, uh, we've been a corporate citizen here in Topeka for the last 83 years. Uh, we were started in Topeka by one of uh, Topeka's greatest uh, citizens, uh, uh, Charles Curtis, uh, the Vice President of the United States under President Coolidge. Uh, when the system was created, that one of the Federal Home Loan Banks, uh, one of the 12, be located here in Topeka, and one has been here since. We serve a four-state region. We serve the states of Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Nebraska. In those four states, we serve about 800 financial institutions and insurance companies. We're a wholesale lender. We provide liquidity to financial institutions so those institutions can loan money to the individuals in this room. Uh, we are a fortunate company in that we have grown over the years. Uh, the current location uh, we moved into in 2002 and in a very short period of time we have outgrown that location. Uh, when we realized that our board had to make the difficult decision of what do we do next. Uh, do we stay in Topeka or one of, of those other three states and the cities within those states? Uh, our strong preference has been to stay here in Topeka. As a consequence, we have contacted local, county, and state officials to see if we can make that happen. I am very appreciative for uh, the efforts uh, by the JADO organization as a whole, uh, by Scott Smathers and Go Topeka, and by the city, and specifically Jim Colson and his staff for working with us up to this point. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, and Commissioner had a question about uh, the engineers, local people, architects, if, if you're at that point. Um, uh, that. And we're at a point where we're not quite there because we're trying to put the package together. And once it is, then move forward with the bidding process. Uh, I would anticipate that, yes, our goal would be to work with local uh, architects and, and contractors. Uh, I cannot make a commitment to that, however, because we have not started that process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, 
had just asked, I didn't know how far along you were in the process in this, and so obviously my preference would be to use local contractors to keep our tax dollars right here and so they reinvest themselves. Well, I want to, on behalf, certainly uh, acknowledge the fact that you are making the decision to remain in Topeka. And, uh, we are grateful and we certainly want to work with you in any way we can um, so that it is successful uh, for you and, and will be successful for us, for the city, the county, and the community. I think your, your workers are from a broad area. Uh, that's correct, uh, but we have currently employ about 220 employees. 160 of those employees reside in Shawnee County. Uh, 155 reside within the city of Topeka. Uh, so the vast majority of what uh, Scott has described as a very high skilled workforce, a highly paid workforce is in this community. Uh, this new construction we believe is key to the next 83 years of the organization in an effort to attract and retain these highly skilled employees. Do you have a, give us an idea of the time frame of uh, as much as you can in the crystal ball or what you would hope it would be? Crystal ball, we would hope to move into a new facility within three years. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councilman Shum. Um, putting on my council person hat here for a second, uh, what concerns me the most is the matching funds for the streets and infrastructure because our budget's already gone through some interesting twists and turns. Uh, I just want to see, know what year we'd be planning for these street improvements to come out in the budget. If we're looking at this current year mm -hmm. and coming up with another 780,000. And I, I, I guess my question is, is this already in the approved expenditure or the expenditure authority? or would this be for a future year? Thank you, city manager, yeah. uh, for assuming this position and <laughs> Thank uh, you very, to thank respond. You. Mr. Chairman and uh, board. So yes, the, all the money that is being included here are for projects that we were already intending on doing. What we're specifically talking about would be street and utility um, investments that go at the roundabout at 6th and Wanamaker and proceed north into that area. So all the money is already in the budget. This would come out of the utilities fund and also the uh, Hassan sales tax. And uh, we are on and going uh, undergoing the pri rebuilding 6th Street. Yeah, th you thank you. The, the, the other part of that question is we anticipate that the, that work would be done uh, late 16, early <coughs> 17. We wouldn't want to do that work. 6th um, Street's already happening, but we wouldn't want to do the Wanamaker work until actually the construction and all the big trucks already tear that up. So it would be after that. Thank you. Other questions? On these, um, I, I had, had a question Councilwoman earlier for Debbie Pat. Mayor. Thank you. Um, you talk about the 17 jobs. I know that there have been some changes in the Federal Home Loan Bank, and over time, you've added some services that you didn't have 20 years ago, let's say. Where would these, what would these 17 jobs uh, be? Uh, we are highly dependent on IT uh, to provide services to our clientele. And it is uh, custom uh, made software and, and maintenance and programming. So over 40% of our staff is IT professionals who support uh, the the lenders and the compliance and the other people that you find in a normal financial institution. In addition, we uh, continually have to add compliance staff like any other financial institution, uh, but the bulk of those individuals would be in the IT area. Thank you. Where, uh, if we are ready for a motion, to like to have the uh, in order to make it properly legal, uh, uh, our city attorney would uh, state what a motion could be. All right. If, if you are so inclined, the motion would be to approve the Federal Home Loan Bank of Topeka funding commitment 
pending review and approval of the contract at a later date. So moved. Okay, Councilman. Commissioner Archer moves. Uh, Councilwoman Delisla seconds. Uh, we will then go to public comment. We have several people that have signed up to speak on this issue. The first is Joseph Ledbetter. Good evening, Governing. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Governing body. Uh, personally, I have no problem with this, but it would be nice to have the handout. It did not come in the emails. None of the people on my side got any of these handouts. We don't even know what you're talking about. Thank you. And I, I think uh, it would be incumbent on Go Topeka to hand that out to the audience since you didn't do it in the emails. Now, why can't we have these things in advance? I, it doesn't sound like a project that would garner a lot of uh, public dissent. So I, those are my questions of this body. Why is public not getting this till just now? And then we're sitting in the audience and we don't even have the handouts. We don't even know what you're talking about. There's no PowerPoint explaining it. Um, I, I think you could do this a little better and I'm not trying to embarrass uh, the, the people asking for the money. I, this isn't about them. This is about procedure of how we do business. I, I don't understand it. I'm hearing whispers from my group over here, citizens for accountability and government. They're, they're asking all kinds of questions. I said, I don't have the answers. I don't know. I personally have no problem with this, but uh, I'll let other people speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jack Sossaman. <coughs> Joe really uh, sort of stole my thunder tonight. But, uh, and basically, I'm not here to criticize you all, but uh, I have a few comments. Uh, I had no idea that what was to be discussed tonight. And when I first realized there was a to meet meeting tonight for JADO, I asked what the agenda uh, was and uh, so that I might comment if required. And uh, the uh, home, federal home loan bank issue uh, that you brought up, that's been brought up tonight, if I'd have known about that, I probably wouldn't have commented on it. I, I would have listened and, and uh, really thought it out and uh, determined, you know, just exactly uh, later on how I might respond to something like that because it sounds good right now hearing it. But I had no idea. And uh, I want to know when the management of the city is going to become op open and transparent. If I was the first to, to complain, then you might, uh, you know, I might have, uh, you might have an excuse uh, uh, for that. But I was among dozens that have been complaining regularly uh, for a number of uh, uh, probably years uh, in Joe's group, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but we need to know uh, when are you going to become transparent with Jado, Go Topeka, and the agendas that are being uh, sent out. Uh, this is the agenda that I got says, discussion and possible action on Go Topeka and Project Cedar. I have no idea what Project Cedar is. How is the public going to know what Project Cedar is? How are they going to comment on that? That's my question. And. Uh, any, anyway, uh, that's basically what I have to, uh, have to say uh, because before you vote on issues or discuss them, you should put out an agenda that probably looks like the one that uh, uh, Mr. Cook just put out, uh, give, gave to us. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is Carol Marple. I would like to echo what the past two speakers had said because, again, you have no idea. Uh, and I'm real curious, and you don't have to answer me, how many of the members of the JADA board knew what Project CEDAR was? Did they have advance notice? Um, and I'm pretty well known for getting off task so, and com 
topic, so I'm going to make another one. I have been reading in the paper that Jado or the Chamber of Commerce is considering hiring one person again to head both organizations, go to Pika and the Chamber of Commerce. I want to say that I don't believe that having one person in charge serves the citizens of this county well, nor either organization. And on a practical aspect, and again, that comes with transparency, we had asked the questions of, this person worked 80 hours a week, but we never got an answer of what kind of annual leave, what kind of sick leave, benefits did they have? And we only found out just a short while ago that Mr. Kinzinger only had a contract for employment with the chamber, not go to PICA. There are many conflicts that I see, and since you'd like me to keep this short, I won't go into them, but I do want to mention that the Jado Bar Board hired Go Topeka for the economic development job. They did not hire the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is Clark Trammell. Good evening. I did not wear a coat tonight because it's hot outside, so I compliment those of you that look so sharp. Um, I want to say before I say anything, this surprised me. No matter how we got here, we're here. And I really don't feel good about what I'm going to say to you. I just don't. Because I know this gentleman, very good man. The Federal Home Loan Bank is a tremendous employer, no matter where they're located. They've been good to this community. I work for them. I know a lot about them that I could share with you. All good. But this question of consolidation of our Federal Home Loan Bank here has been on the table politically for at least eight, if not 10 years. And I guess the questions that I would say is, is this the best place? I really don't like saying this, but it's business. Is this the best place for us to be spending our economic dollars with a 50 plus billion dollar corporation that can fund its own issues and its own relocation as compared to spending that money on bringing in companies that either aren't here or that are in a broke back situation that really needs the help because we have limited dollars, folks. And you need to be sensitive to that. My question that I would ask is, why are you all here asking for this? Why do you need it? Because if we do this, every corporation in this town that doesn't need money, the gates are open for them to come and get on the wagon to get dollars that really aren't needed that should be allocated elsewhere. I want the Federal Home Loan Bank to stay here. I think another question that should be asked is if you do this, which I'm sure you will, I understand, does that guarantee that the Federal Home Loan Bank in Topeka, in this district, will stay in Kansas? Because they've been looking at a <coughs> lot of locations for consolidation of that whole network. I haven't heard anybody have that dialogue. This is a rah-rah, this is business. This is $1.23 million out of a very limited budget to do economic development in a scenario where we've got problems in this community with what's going on with our taxes, with our schools, of trying to redesign our whole economic development plan that I believe Jay Garner is going to speak about, that we need to have that discussion and then reallocate a business plan to spend our money wisely. I want you all to stay here. I think the Federal Home Loan Bank is great. Good leadership, smart people. What they do for this country is incredible. But are they really entitled? I don't even know why they're here. This just absolutely throws me back. And as I said when I started, I really didn't want to come and make these comments, but you need to hear them because I think you need to consider it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is Scott, Scott Griffith. All right, that completes the public comment. Uh, board members, is there uh, any other discussion on the uh, motion before us? Mr. Mayor, if I might. Just to respond to some of the public uh, comments, yes, I was aware of this prior tonight, 
and that's because I've met with Scott Smathers from the Go Topeka. I meet with him on a regular basis so that I'm aware of what projects he's working on. That's part of my role as a member of JADO. That's part of my role as a county commissioner. I feel it's my civic duty and obligation is to keep up to speed with what projects they're working on and how our tax dollars are being managed and utilized. So yes, I was aware of this project before tonight. Now, did I know that it would be on this agenda at this time? No, that's at your pleasure, Mr. Mayor, as you serve and set the agenda. But I don't see this as being a bad investment for our community. This is a very good investment for our community. When we're talking about $100,000 jobs, we're losing 200 high paying dollar jobs. The economic impact of that is immeasurable. And if we are using some of our tax dollars to retain those jobs, enhance jobs, because you'll see there's no money for retaining. There's only money for new jobs to come. And if we're having new brick and mortar production in Topeka, that has an impact in the overall um, visual pleasure of the aesthetics of Topeka. And I think that we have a duty and opportunity to welcome Federal Home Loan Bank to stay for another 83 or 183 or 283, <laughs> as many as I can get Pat to commit to, years. So I think that it is a good investment for this community. Thank you. Mr. Just Archer. briefly, Mayor, uh, I agree with Commissioner Cook. This is a tremendous win for Go Topeka, for JADO, and for our community. And anybody that tells you different doesn't know what they're talking about. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Other comments? Seeing none, we have a motion before us. Uh, we will have a roll call vote on this. Mayor Walgas? Yes. Yes. Council Member De La Isla? Yes. Council Member Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Bueller? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. And Commissioner Archer? Yes. We have seven yes. Seven have it voted yes. The uh, uh, project is approved. Um, that completes the agenda for this meeting. Um, seeing no other business before us, the meeting is adjourned. And ask Jay Garner, could you just briefly describe how you want us? I'm sorry. Oh, one, I'm sorry. One comment. There, there is public comment. The people who signed up for public comment were the ones who wanted to speak at the end of the meeting. That's that's correct. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, moving ahead too rapidly. So we will we will proceed with public comment, and uh, the first person to speak is uh, Joe Ledbetter. <coughs> Thank you, Governing Body. <clears throat> As I said earlier, I had no problem with the proposal. However, for elected officials to start calling people names and saying they don't know what they're talking about simply because they disagree, which was not me, uh, that's quite offensive to uh, other people in the audience. Um, now, this proposal was handed out. We just got it tonight. That's why some of the people were very upset, and I think that's reasonable. As far as doing your job, that's good. We're doing our job as citizens. We'd like to know what's going on with our economic development money. We are just as important as the other people in this audience, every one of us. There's nobody in this room better than anybody else. I don't care what degrees we've got or what titles. Um, that's been part of the problem with these JADO meetings. The public has a lack of trust. It's up to you to get the public to trust again, not us. We are simply stating we have concerns, and we have every right to put that on the record. We have every right to write letters to the editor, comment in the paper, however we feel like. It's called free speech, something I dearly love, and I hope every one of you do too. Some of you are veterans just like me. On this proposal, it was not even clear what part of this was coming out of the JADO budget. I mean, you could have done somebody. I'm not blaming the person asking for the money. I'm saying Go Topeka could have done a better job of handing these out to the audience, making it clear what part was city infrastructure, what part was JADO funds. 
I mean, they're being paid $5 million a year to do this service. Let's do better. Let's be clear. Let's hand out better documents. Let's, let's move this process along. Now, I'm glad that bank's here. I'm very glad. And as I said, I have no problem with the proposal. Other people may. That's up to them. But I hope we don't get into the name calling uh, session of calling people names just because they simply disagree with something, especially because it wasn't transparent and clear and given out ahead of time. We the citizens also have a job to do. And I wish more of us did it and paid attention to our government. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Jack Sussman. Again, just a couple of comments. I would go a little bit further than what Joe said. To get this, this, this information on the website with the information that he said needs to go on the website, so that all citizens of Topeka can uh, get the information before the meeting. Uh, that would be my only comment. I agree with Joe on, uh, I think uh, the comment uh, that was made was uncalled for. Uh, that person didn't know what he was talking about and, and uh, it may have been uh, a general statement more than anything, but uh, I know I took it as a, as a personal affront to the person that that's a good friend of mine. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, I, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you for your comments. Carol Marple. First, I'll admit to being thoroughly confused because I did not sign up for the previous comments. So that's why I thought it was public comments. So I, I do apologize that my comments were totally out of place. But I will also say that I agree with the people before me about the comments that were made here. They were uncalled for. You know, we listen to you, whatever you have to say. We watch you on your cell phones. We watch you on your tablets. We watch you not pay attention. But we don't call you names. And I thought it was very reprehensible what was said. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Clark Trammell. Again, good evening. Uh, I do not take offense if I'm the person that was directed at. I got broad shoulders. I do disagree. And I would offer this to you on that matter. If we need to sit down and talk about positions and who knows what they're talking about, et cetera, I'm available. Just tell me time and place. I will be there. And it will be a good discussion. And it will be one that we will all leave whoever shows up agreeing to agree, even though we may have differences of opinion, which I totally respect, been there, done that, got a target, it's okay. But we will leave with a good decision, and we will leave with understanding. I have one point I want to make to you all that I hope that you will listen to and take in the process of your job as JADO board. You have coming up a meeting with your consultant. Two major things have happened with that consultant. And yes, I do know what I'm talking about because I've done this for 44 years successfully throughout the United States. Two things that have happened is the consultant you hired, their guru, their CEO, their leader has left. Now, when you made the decision to hire Go Topeka with a contract, you took that into consideration. Not only that, we have had major change in the tax structure of this state, in the funding of our schools, and the negative image that many of that trickles down to that involves economic development. These are major issues of swings in the change of the dynamics of the economic development playing field in this state. You need to understand with your consultant, go to PICA, what changes are they making in their business plan? And what target markets are we looking at that might be different than where we were before that happened to take us forward in spending our money judiciously and effectively and the utility of saying? That's your job. And I'm not lecturing you. I'm talking to you business person to business person. 
looking at every one of you face to face. I'm very serious about this because it's true, it's correct. I've talked to Mr. Garner, not to put you on the table, but he has this in his platform to discuss because you need to understand that. Who we are today in economic development and what we have to offer and the perception of this state is totally different than it was when you signed that contract. Things change. Where's the business plan? What are they doing to adjust for that? And what thought processes do you need to change in looking at industries to attract here? The Federal Home Loan Bank isn't going anywhere. What you did, fine. They're a great company. I told you that. I told you I really wasn't comfortable to say what I had to say. But it's business, and you need to hear it. Everything isn't sunshine in this state. There are clouds out there, and there are storms on the horizon. If I can do anything to help you as a positive part of this discussion, which I've told you I want to be, then so be it. And I thank you for your time. I can tell who's in, who's out. You've got a big job, and if I can help, I'm there to do that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Scott Griffith. I'd like to just uh, tell you thank you very much for the decision you made tonight to uh, approve the recommended contract. Uh, the Federal Home Loan Bank did have other choices. I don't know specifics of where they could have gone or what incentives other communities might have uh, offered them to, to make a change. That would have been a huge win for another community to have taken the Federal Home Loan Bank from Topeka, <coughs> Kansas. So I thank you for the decision you made tonight to approve the contract <coughs> or to, to approve the project subject to the, uh, the final contract uh, being brought before you again. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to also point out is, and, and just as a reminder, um, we present to this body uh, our, our business plan with a very detailed budget and very detailed, uh, um, a, deep, a lot of details about uh, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And you approve that budget for us and that business plan, and then we, prom we come back to you on a quarterly basis. And we make course corrections along the way. And we're, we're constantly reevaluating how we're doing business and what we need to be doing. <coughs> now, you all know we're undergoing quite a bit of change right now. We've got a lot of things going on, and, and that process is moving forward. And those co conversations are going to continue. Uh, and so the, it hasn't stopped. Uh, <coughs> finally, and, and it probably doesn't uh, need to be said, but the Federal Home Loan Bank, I have volunteered on other boards and in other capacities with many Federal Home Loan Bank employees. Not only are they spending their money and they're living in our community, 155 is what I heard is, is in the city limits of Topeka. You know, they're, <coughs> they're going to our schools, they're, 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 they're patronizing our businesses. Um, they're volunteering and they have the support of the senior management of that organization as well. So not only were we potentially going to lose a, a huge company with well-paying jobs, we were gonna lose families, so our schools would have been impacted. And, and all the other businesses in our community would have been impacted with, uh, with that loss. So thank you very much for the decision that you made tonight, and I uh, look forward to uh, working with you uh, the rest of this year. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. I'm going to make one other um, side comment. When Go Topeka enters into discussions with various companies, entities looking at coming to Topeka, there is in almost every situation a confidentiality agreement. And in that process, a name is given to that company, in this case, Project Cedar. And that remains totally confidential throughout the process. There are many stories about when this has been violated, the company then excuses itself from being considered by that community. So that is the reason why we have a name such as Project Cedar, and it remains that title until it becomes public. So it's unfortunate in many ways that we can't be saying leading up to the meeting what the company is, uh, but that's the reason and that's why it's handled in that manner for, for better or worse in that situation. Uh, any other comments from the uh, board? Seeing none, the meeting is adjourned. And Jay, would you describe our, how we want to, your meeting now, yes, sir, how you want to uh, uh, realign? Well, most of you can stay where you are. Um, we are going to use that screen behind you. So, Commissioner and, and Mayor, if you all want to just kind of turn and get comfortable, and I hope you aren't going to leave. <laughs>